Do you want to take five minutes off your 10K time? Are you tired of shaving seconds off? That's exactly what I did. And I went from just dipping under 40 minutes to running 33.27 just three months later. And once I got to that point, running 3.20 per kilometer for 10K, I then did the maths and got really excited about the marathon and the 2.20 time in the marathon, which is exactly what I nearly did when I ran two hours and 21 minutes, went on to represent England, and then I went on to represent Great Britain in the ultra marathon as well. So if I can do that and make those big gains, pretty sure you can take five minutes off your 10K time. Number one, I focused on consistency. I took a step back from what I was doing and when I looked at my training, it was pretty erratic. It was all over the place because although I was focused on the endurance and the long runs and the speed, which was pretty ad hoc, I wasn't giving the respect that the recovery runs and the easy runs deserve and also my sleep and reduced stress and just understanding, but also believing that those things in line, you doing your recovery runs and easy runs easy enough so that you're enhancing your recovery, it's active recovery and the sole purpose is to get yourself ready for the next big session so you can gain as much super compensation from that interval session or that long run as possible, having that respect changed my game. And so I brought everything else down in, in pace and down in effort so I would be fully recovered, ready to go on interval day and long run day. And that was a big factor for me. I also guarded my sleep with my life. And I still do to this day. It is the fundamental of everything. And there's an argument to say what's more important, reduce stress or sleep. But for me, if I get my sleep right and I guard my eight hours with my life, the rest of my life is much easier to cope with and therefore my, my stress comes down anyway. Those two things are the fundamentals of everything along with diet and hydration, getting your race day nutrition and pre-breakfast right as well. Number two, my pacing was all over the place. When I did that just under 40 minutes, I stopped four times during that race. And I just wasn't pacing it right because I had no idea what I was aiming for in the race. And therefore I wasn't working from the goal and working back in the interval training and in the long run so that everything was relative to the goal. It sounds crazy for me to even say it now, but that's exactly as I was training. I was training as fast as I possibly could on interval day. I was often running 800 meters in very quick times and 1500 meters and kilometer reps in very quick times, but I wasn't doing the interval training specific to the pace that I was trying to do on race day, which was four minutes per kilometer at the time, and a little bit faster to make the latter stages of the 10K feel easier. Once I got that right, then I was able to start working at 345 per kilometer and start doing my intervals and segments within the long run at 345 per kilometer, which started to move me on from 40 minutes to 37 and a half minutes. And that's point number three. What I then realized when I started to do my kilometer repeats in 345 and aiming for that 3730 pace was that actually I was capable of way more. And so I upped that pace to 340, then 335, and then it became very comfortable for me to run 330s. And I would go out there and I would run eight times a kilometer in 345 initially, and that very quickly became 330. And then I became pretty confident that I could hold 10 times a kilometer in 330. And it very quickly put me to a point where I felt that if I can do that in training, and I've got the accumulated fatigue, I've not got the taper in my legs, once I freshen up, I'm capable of much more. Number four, what I then realized, being able to do 10 times a kilometer in 330 was a great background, but I then needed to up the pace even more and run shorter reps. So I needed to get my body used to doing 200 meter and 400 reps going way faster than my current 10K pace or the 10K pace that I thought I could hold, 37.30, 345 per kilometer. So I started to do 400 meter reps and I kept coming out with the 320 per kilometer pace. And that built a lot of confidence that I can regularly do initially 12, then 15, but then 20 times 400 meters at 320 per kilometer pace. And that was a huge confidence booster. Number five, then for the long run, what I was doing before was again, really ad hoc. It was just going out there for one and a half, two, three hours, and just spending time out in the nature, 
absolutely loving running. Then once I had the goal in mind, and initially that was 37.30, then 35, then 33.20, then I started to get specific with the long run. And I would go out there and run no more than 15 kilometers. So when you look at other athletes preparing for 10 kilometers, that's not a, a big long run. But being specific with that 15K, I knew it was 50% more than the race distance that I was attacking, but I'd go out there and run it pretty much like a tempo run. So I'd go out there and run an hour and try and hit 15 kilometers. And sometimes I'd do a bit under, sometimes I'd do a bit over. Depending on the train, I'd run a lot on the trails. And so you're running with the uphills, you, you've got roots and sort of technical to deal with. But I'd come up, the, the effort, if I was looking at heart rate at a time, which I absolutely wasn't, I would have looked at the effort and seen that I was really pushing it into zone three, zone four, for an hour. And that definitely made a massive effect on, first of all, had total confidence that I could race the 10K instead of just trying to get to, to, towards the end. Also wasn't then in a place where I would need to stop and get my breathing under control and then go again in the 10K. I wasn't going to be bad at pacing because I had the confidence from the intervals what I could hold per kilometer. Now I had a decent set of long run where I could figure out what I could hold and how long I could hold it for in terms of pace, but also effort. And then there's the execution. So you can have the best training schedule in the world and you can really go at the training, work hard on the interval sessions, hard on the long run, make sure all the, the, the other running is easy enough so you can definitely prepare for the interval session and the long run and gain that super compensation. But if you don't taper, if you don't freshen up, if you don't have a pacing strategy, you're going to fail to execute. And what you can come away from that experience, you can do two or three of them, get it wrong, and still have the data as to what's gone wrong, or you can jump ahead and get it right. So what that looked like was, I need seven to 10 days, and at the time it was seven days, and that's the, distance, the, the time that I was playing with, and I was just bringing down the volume. I was keeping the intensity the same, but bringing down the volume. And then I would go into the final couple of days, reducing the volume massively to what I was doing. So if I was going out there and running 10K, that would now be three or 4K. So I wanted to hit race day, feeling like I'm chomping at the bit. I want to get going. I'm really eager for it. But then you've got to go into the pacing and realize that for the first half, for the first 5K, I want this to feel super smooth, super light, super low effort. And I want to get to that halfway point, that 1640, and feel like now's the time to go. And that's exactly what I did. And I split it up into five, three, and two. And that second 3K, so after the 5K, the first 5K, that second sort of five to 8K, that's a lot of the time when somebody loses it because they've lost focus, it's a lot of energy, they're starting to get tired, and it's that kind of lull area. You don't want to have that. You want to be able to push at that point and get yourself ready to execute in the final two kilometers. And that's exactly what I trained to. So for me, it was about having the handbrake on to 5K, but running 320 per kilometer. Then from five to eight kilometers, pushing and really digging in, exactly the same in a marathon from halfway to 35K. That chunk of time is when everybody loses time. That's when you really need to focus. You're on your own. It's likely that you've left the group and there's nobody else around you. You've really got to dig in. It's exactly the same in the 10K from 5K to 8K. So I dug in and then in the final ninth and 10th kilometer, then I went for it and tried to make up as much time as I possibly could. I'd underestimated the finish line and the, the distance was a little bit different, but I came in at 33.27. And so that's the blueprint. And if you do that and implement those strategies and go from where you are now, maybe it's a 50 minute 10K, but maybe you've got your sights on 40 minutes. We have people at the All In Run Club who've gone from 40 minutes to 30 minutes for the 5K in a matter of 10 weeks, which is brilliant, but it's because they've implemented doing the right things well. That's as simple as it can possibly be. Yes, you need to know the progressions, but if you were just to implement Everything you've learned in that video, you would become a faster 10K runner. Good luck and let me know what's your current 10K time and what is your dream 10K time.